everyone, welcome to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy Veltry and on this channel, I like to do thrift flips, wood signs. I'm always dabbling in something new. So if you think that you would enjoy that, then make sure to stay tuned. Today, we are going back into Halloween. Okay, you guys, I know it's not everybody's thing and I know I have to say that every video, but you still gotta watch because you might just learn something new. If you don't decorate for Halloween, totally understand it, but maybe there are some new techniques in this video or something else that might inspire you to, you know, piece pieces together. So you guys, let's go ahead and start this Halloween DIY video. I picked up this book at the thrift store for $5.99 and usually I would not pay that much, but I've had this vision in my mind since I started Halloween DIYs, so I didn't mind paying it. <laughs> I'm going to use the Little Dipper brush, which I do not use enough. It is so good. And I am going to coat the front and the front side and the back of this book with old school. It's a beautiful charcoal color. And I'm going to do two coats on the spine of the book and the back of the book. I'm going to let that completely dry. And I'm going to then grab this beautiful gal. This is the Halloween master board or master blocks. I do have them in stock. And this woman right here is right when I got this paper and I saw her, I knew I wanted this book and this layout and I love the way it turned out. So I didn't really know where this was going at first. So I took a wet paintbrush and went around the edges because I just knew if the paper did show on the sides that I didn't want clean lines. I wanted it to look um, ripped and kind of like battered, but it doesn't end up showing. So you do what you want. Now I'm going to paint the back. Now this is an option where I don't really know if it made a difference. The paper itself was dark, but I was scared that if I put the dark paper over dark paint, it was going to make like her light features of her face even darker, which I didn't want. So I took the added step and I painted the back. So to each their own, I'm not sure, but I thought I'd show you what I did. Now I'm going to take my liquid patina decoupage medium and the smoothie DIY brush. I am going to layer that on the back of the book and then whatever I have left on my brush, I'm going to put over the decoupage paper. If you are someone that decoupages often, the smoothie brush is something you definitely want to add to your collection. It makes decoupaging so easy, especially over larger surfaces. Um, I did get some wrinkles in this, which I wasn't mad about because I think that the wrinkles looked really cool with the, um, the tree branches and stuff that were going on in the background. So I wasn't too stressed about that. I usually am not if I get wrinkles and I didn't want to spritz it with water because I did not want to reactivate that paint on the back and potentially have it smear. Now that it's all dried, I'm going to take paper clay. And the reason I like to use the paper clay when doing something like this is because I think it's a lot more moldable. Um, it's softer and easy to work with versus using like the IOD clay or the DOS clay. So that is why I'm using it on this book. So my vision was to make it look like the pages have been torn away and the book had been aged and um, I wanted it to frame out this picture. So what I'm doing is I'm just dragging that clay along the book, flattening it out with the rolling pin. And then you can see how the inside of it looks like it's kind of ripped away. And then I'm going to take the kindest regard stamp and I'm gonna push that into the clay and y'all look at how gorgeous that is. A stamp is not just a stamp. You could use it for so many things. And I'm going to repeat the process all the way around the book. So again, pushing it down and then to get that little, like the torn page effect, I grabbed this little tool and I picked up underneath the clay and then pulled it towards me so it looked frayed and ripped. Then I take that kindness regard stamp once again, 
and I'm just going to push that down. And if there were any blank spots, then I just get a piece of that stamp and just push it on down. I'm gonna repeat this step all the way around our book. The next step we're gonna take is taking that old school paint that we did the, um, the whole book in. We are going to paint the clay while it is wet. This is going to help you um, from your, it's gonna help the clay not crack. That's what I'm trying to say. So the clay is wet, we're painting over it, it's gonna help so that we don't get a bunch of cracked pieces in our clay. I like how I had to repeat that twice. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. So I am just stippling that on. You do wanna be softer so you don't damage any of the beautiful detail. And then some of it gets on my paper because I'm trying to get on that inside edge. And that's okay because it just created a little shadowing effect. Now I'm taking the antiquity stamp. And I saw Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. She is so good at taking different elements of pieces and bringing them together. So this is where I got the idea from. And I'm taking one of the stamps and it says Gabrielle on it and then some other cursive on the bottom. I'm taking this gold, I think it's folk art acrylic paint and I am brushing that on to my stamp. Then I'm going to take that book and I am going to just put it on its side and press that down. The stamps move very easily on curved surfaces and look at how cool. And the Gabrielle just fits so perfect with our woman on the front cover. Now an unexpected stamp we're gonna use is the new Portobello stamp. This has tons of elements, you guys, that can be used for everyday crafting, not just Christmas. This one is actually a urn and it has like a little tree coming out of it, but I thought it was a good little added extra detail for the spine of the book. So I'm gonna put that on there and look at how cute that is. It just adds just that little, it takes it up a notch, you know? And the, one of the last steps is to take letter press, which is a soft gray, and I am dry brushing it. So there's hardly any of that paint on my chippy brush. And this is going to help take all of those um, cursive letters, letters, geez, I'm a mess, you guys. It's going to help bring the kindest regard stamp to life. You could already see how it's making it pop out at you. And I dry brush the rest of it and clear it with wax. And you guys, this turned out better than I could have imagined. It's not very often that something I think of actually like full on comes to life, but this was better than I could have ever expected. It has so much detail, and as one of my girlfriends, Erin, said, she said it's eerily beautiful, which I could not agree more. I am, abs you guys know my love for books. This is gorgeous, and it's a useful item. Somebody can open this up and use it to store items in, so I absolutely love her. Let me know what you think. Now you guys know I don't like to waste. So I am taking this scrap piece of flooring from our old house. I had leftover milk paint, which I painted the flooring with, and then it sat um, on the side of my table forever. So we are gonna make a little Halloween sign with it. So you guys, I literally talked crap about this dang thin mount from IOD saying, oh, you can use the kitchen mats, all that stuff. But now that I've used it, it's a game changer. Having the grid on here just takes it to a whole nother level because you will see how straight the lettering came out on this sign. So for most of us, we do not have two sets of letter stamps. So we have to play around with the placement a little bit. So as you can see on the top, we have the old and the E needed to be used twice. So we need to lay out our stamps beforehand. So you will see here, I have to use a couple letters twice. So I'm going to lay it out. You'll see right here, there's supposed to be two O's. So I do an O and then I use the C so I can see how, like what the size is and if I will have room for everything that I want to use. Once I know that it's gonna fit, 
Then I'm going to start over to my left side and I'm gonna use that thin mount, which actually is pretty long, so it's nice because it picks up a solid of mount. And then I'm going to readjust my letters so that they're nice and straight on the grid. I'm gonna stamp them with my black ink. This is permanent ink. And then I'm going to lay it back down and I'm going to press on each and every letter with my finger. This um, piece of flooring had a lot of texture in it. So I wanted to make sure that that ink got into all of the nooks and crannies of that wood. And then I lift it up and y'all look at how perfect that looks. Now I'm going to wipe the stamps off and I'm going to lay whichever ones I need back down onto our sign and then we are going to repeat the process. Now once I have all the lettering, you know I can't stop there. So I'm actually going in with the rev, rev, Reverie, Reverie <laughs> stamp set. And this actually comes with two sheets in it. And it has some beautiful detail pieces, which we're gonna use on our sign. And another unexpected stamp is the Portobello one, which came out this Christmas, but y'all, it is not just for Christmas. There are tons of pieces in here that can be used with everyday crafting, like this little label. So I'm gonna take the thin mount, pick it all up, stamp it, of course, put my ink on, dab, da, dab, 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 press it on down using my fingers once again to really get that ink on there. And then I'm going to pick it up. And because y'all know that I am extra, I could not just leave the bottom. I needed to add something to the top. So going into the stamp set of Reverie, I took these two stamps and we're gonna add them on the sides of the old. After I'm done with this, you guys, I'm gonna let that ink set up for a while, probably like a couple hours. You just don't want to take the chance of smearing it. And then I'm going to take Big Top and I am going to clear the entire piece. Now, um, this was too thin to put screws through. The flooring was too hard to put nails through and it was too heavy to put hot glue on. So this is definitely something somebody's going to have to use command strips for or use as like a shelf leaner. But nonetheless, this came out so pretty. The color was absolute perfection for this sign and the little added elements of the details of these stamps just set this sign off. Like it took it up a whole nother level. Look at all the detail just in that little label piece. It is insane. But this is such an easy way, you guys, of making signs. Hey everyone, checking in. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I knew when I got the Roy Cycle decoupage papers, the Halloween ones, I got so inspired. I decorated my entire bookshelf like around the Halloween master board paper. And then when I saw the second paper with this beautiful image of a woman, I was like, she needs to be on a book. She needs to be on a book. So that inspired this entire video. So I hope you guys are getting ideas. I hope it's getting you excited for the Halloween season. And y'all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging this video, then please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's an absolutely free way you can help your girl out. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank you guys so very much for spending your time with me. I know that a lot of us don't have a lot of time. So that time that you take to watch these 25 minute videos really means a lot to my family and I. So I appreciate y'all. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Let's get back to it. For this adorable DIY, we are gonna take a Dollar Tree uh, little wood round and I'm gonna take the color crockery. This is the JRV cottage color. And I am going to basically kind of like prime my wood piece with this. Now I've seen several takes on this in the IOD community and I just wanted to do a very simple rendition of it. So we are gonna take the Christmas kitties. And y'all, the Christmas kitties aren't just for Christmas. If you have a little bit of imagination, you can turn these into party kitties, Halloween kitties, uh, birthday, I said birthday already, but 
there are more possibilities than just Christmas with the kitties and the puppy stamps. So keep that in mind when checking them out. We are gonna take the kitty with the Santa hat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place my pumpkin down first. I need to see placement. I'm gonna stamp my kitty and then I'm going to put it, hover it over my pumpkin. So I make sure that I get the right placement. Then I'll pull my pumpkin out and then I will press my kitty into that wood round. This is also why I primed the wood round so my ink does not absorb into that wood. Now I'm gonna grab the mask that comes with all of your stamps. I'm gonna put it over our cat and then I'm going to take my pumpkin. We do not need to put any ink on that stem. We're just gonna put it on the body of the pumpkin and we are going to now lay that over our kitty and we're going to push that down very well want to get all those details and when we lift that back up our whole kitty is going to be still intact and sitting on top of our pumpkin now this kitty wait nope that's not the part coming next <laughs> the part coming next is paint we are going to take summer crush and we are going to give our pumpkin two coats of paint now I thought about painting the kitty, but I felt like leaving the cat um, with just the ink gave it more of a vintage vibe on the sign, which hopefully comes across once it's all done. You guys let me know if you think it looks vintagey. Now I'm gonna cover up the kitty once again, and we're gonna put our stamp back over it with ink. This is going to bring back all of the details of that pumpkin and look at how cute this is. Now, this kitty would be perfect in the Nightmare Before Christmas movie, but we're not in that movie. So we need to turn this Christmas hat into a witch's hat. So using the hat that's there for us already, I'm going to paint it black and then I'm going to create a brim. Again, you're just using the form of the hat itself, so everything's laid out for you. Just don't cover those ears up, and you got yourself a witch's hat. Now I'll take the um, golden ticket, which is exactly like pennies from heaven, except it is gold, and I'm going to put a little ribbon there for some more definition, and then I felt like it needed a little something extra, so I put some polka dots on that witch's hat. Now I can't stop there. I'm going to add a border around it. So taking these stamps, I decided I'm gonna take some of the floral um, ones, and we are going to wrap this around the wood round. I tried doing leaves and other things like behind the cat but it just seemed like too much close to the pumpkin and the kitty cat so i thought this was a great way of adding a little bit more detail without going completely overboard so sorry my head's in the way there so i'm going to take this all the way around the circle and then we're just going to clear that with big top you guys and we're done so what a great way of taking a seasonal stamp and turning it into something else, which is amazing. Look at how much detail is in that cat, you guys. Even like the little fur, oh my gosh, it's adorable. So this was my take on this. Some people have gone all out and they are gorgeous. So definitely look them up. All right, so the paper that started this entire video, the Halloween blocks. So I'm gonna take this old, <laughs> gosh, what is this, box? You guys, it was signed Sammy Clary on the back, which means I've had this since before I got married in 2018. This is how ridiculous sometimes our craft stash is that I've had this box that long, but hey, I'm putting it to use now. So I wanted to make this whitewash wood darker. So I'm just taking a dark and decrepit liquid patina and I'm going to use it as a stain. So I brush it on and then I get my paper towel and then I wipe the excess away. And then for the inside of our box, I'm going to take crinoline and I'm going to paint the bottom 
with crinoline and then the inside rim of the box, we're gonna take little black dress and I'm going to paint all of that in black because that's actually going to be showing um, when we finish our box. I'm next going to take the right side of this decoupage paper. And the easiest way was to put the box on top, get a wet paintbrush, and then I went around it but then I was like, man, I don't want to mess up that, <laughs> the lady that I want to use. So I ended up having to get the scissors and cut that nice and straight. But now I'm going to take that decoupage paper and I'm going to put it in the box. And then again, taking a wet paintbrush, I'm just going to line it so I know how much to take off of my paper. And I don't mind the like ripped look at all. It doesn't even show. Now, again, we're taking liquid patina and we're gonna take our brush, brush it on. I did spritz the paper this time with water and then we're gonna take that excess on our brush and smooth it down. I love that you get a little bit of everything in this image. You get the moon, you get the crows, you get the handwriting, it's beautiful. Now I'm just gonna take that liquid patina and we're gonna coat everything. We're gonna go over the decoupage paper, we're going to also clear that black paint that we painted on the inside. And then I'm gonna take one of these molds. And you guys, I would love to show you all this, but it took forever, okay? And I was reminded why I don't personally do detail work like this. For those of you that do, I commend you because it was a lot of work to do uh, these fine details and I didn't even go all out. I tried to make it as simple as I could, but it still took forever. So I get some colors. I took um, Firestarter, Liquid Sunshine, Farm Fresh, and then I also got Pennies from Heaven and I did like the stained glass windows. And after that, I coated it with some black wax, wiped the excess away because I wanted it to look, you know, dark and eerie. And I'm going to attach that with some tight bond and some hot glue. I'm going to have it lifted a little bit up because we're going to put some moss below it. And after this dries up and we can prop it up, I am going to take one of these little Dollar Tree skeletons. It's the ones that come on the garland and the die cut butterflies from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna glue that to the back of it. And in all honesty, you guys, I don't usually do DIYs that um, have smalls or minis in it. So this was very, very new to me, but I thought I, I would try it, why not? So I glued that on there and then I'm gonna take the moss and I hot glued it to the bottom and then I had it kind of going up the back of the box as well. I'm gonna grab this skeleton and I'm gonna put hot glue on the bottom of its feet. And then the left side of that butterfly wing since it's where it's going to touch. And then I'll show you right here, there we go. See, he's not going anywhere. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know what to add here. I didn't have any little mini pieces. So I ended up like putting parts of the skeleton in there just to fill space. But I honestly feel like this could be super cute if I did more, had more pieces like a little gravestone or pumpkin. So I hope you guys can take the inspiration and do more than I was able to do with it. Cause I still, I think it's cute but I definitely think it could have been better. What would you guys have done to take this project up a notch? I would love to hear it. And if you guys are into minis or smalls, let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. This was my last Halloween video. I had to get that book done. Like I needed to put that book on, on like, I needed to do it before stopping Halloween DIYs. And I told you guys, I would show you my bookshelves. So these are all thrifted items and handmade upcycles by myself. A lot of these, I think all of them, you guys have seen me do in my videos and I love them. Not one thing except a couple Dollar Tree pieces are new. Everything, including the books are thrifted, pictures are thrifted, oil lamps, I mean, all of it. So 
I love my bookshelves. They make me so happy and they make me smile and I hope they make you smile too. You guys have an amazing week and I'll see you back here for Thrifted Thursday. It's been so boring. Bye.